So I don't know if you all know this fact, but one in every four people have suffered in their lifetime or are suffering now with some sort of mental illness. And by that, I'm talking about um, PTSD, postpartum, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, uh, um, anorexia, even autism. There, there are so many different kinds of mental illnesses. And our family started a foundation that raises funding to help uh, raise money for research and treatment of these illnesses. Uh, my parents started it 40 years ago because of uh, illness that was in my family, actually my brother. And so this will be, this coming October 13th, will be the Angus Barnes 36th annual uh, walk. And so I didn't know if you all knew because a lot of you are brand new here and didn't know what this was all about, but we are raising funding for such important work that is being done in this field. Now, this is a field that no one else is really touching because usually mental illness issues are kind of swept under the carpet and there's a big stigma with it. But what we do is we have this event here at the Angus Barn once a year and now we're up to about 4,000 people that come. So it takes all of us to pull this together and to make it happen. And it's a festival and a walk and a run. And it's so much fun. It's so much fun all surrounding a cause that is really serious. There's a band, there's lots of food vendors, there's all kinds of things to do. It's an incredible family fun day with 100% of the money raised going directly to the cause. And we really count on a lot of our Angus Barn team members to help us pull this off. So I, I thought that it would be nice for you all to watch a little video on how the Walk for Hope got started and then to watch another video on a new program that we're now funding called CHAMP at UNC, which is basically for young adults and adolescents who are suffering with severe uh, depression issues. So I'm going to uh, let y'all watch these videos now and then I'm going to come back on and tell you all the different ways you can help. The Foundation of Hope began with two parents who loved their son. My brother Thad, he was my dad's little superstar. My brother got sick very quickly. He went to every hospital in the United States. It took a very long time for them to diagnose. He has a severe bipolar schizoaffective disorder. I'm so proud of my mom and dad. They believed the best way they could make an impact was to fund seed research projects. So they started a foundation, the Foundation of Hope. And we have some of the best, most brilliant clinicians in the world in Chapel Hill. And if we get them money, they can get these studies started. The Foundation of Hope is making sure that these illnesses don't continue to devastate, and they do it through research. The science is out there, we just need to fund it and to stop the problem and combat these illnesses head on, and that's what the foundation does. Seed money takes the creative ideas and helps to bring them to life. As these studies get started, they could go to the National Institute of Mental Health and say, we can take all that money and leverage it over and over and over again to take a little bit of money and create a major amount of money. So I've studied autism at UNC for over 15 years and about 10 years ago I had an idea to take my research in a new direction. I applied to NIH for funding and was pretty clearly told that without preliminary data this line of work was not going to get funded. And that is where the Foundation of Hope really came to the rescue. The first study I proposed to the Foundation of Hope uh, was a project where I looked at behavioral responses in children with a family member with psychosis. The Foundation of Hope Award was $40,000. The federal grant was for $3 million. This absolutely would not have been possible without that seed grant from the Foundation of Hope. When my father passed away in 1988, what he loved more than anything else was the foundation that he started because of his son. They said, we're going to have a walk and raise money for that foundation. 
Everyone wanted to do it again and again and again and then grew from there. We all really support the Walk for Hope because we know a lot of our success depends on their investment in our work. The Walk for Hope is something that if you haven't seen it, it's, it's unbelievable. And there's this camaraderie that is just so contagious. We don't only say we're gonna hope for the best, but here's where you can get help. And you know what help is? Help is hope. One of my oldest memories with Gray is from when I was in preschool. Every day after school, Gray would come home and he would teach us what he learned in class. He was loving, he was dependable, he was intelligent, and he was true. Gray talked with me about his suicidality once. I remember he brought it up to me that sometimes he got really lonely and it got really hard. And he felt like his life was a sine wave of happiness and sadness, and sometimes the highs were really high and sometimes the lows were really low. There was a stigma that existed within mental illness. It didn't matter what I said at that point. It was so ingrained in him that this was something to be ashamed of, that he felt it was better to take his own life than to, to face that shame and that disappointment. But I would have done anything to get him any help he needed. I would not have been ashamed. He would not have disappointed me. In fact, I would have been so grateful and honored that he felt he could have shared with me that he needed help. Stories about depression and suicide like Grayson's are so heartbreaking. Suicide rates for youth and adolescents have risen 57% since the year 2000. Mood disorders are the second greatest cause of hospitalization in the United States for ages 18 to 44. The CHAMP program is playing a critical role with innovative research that will lead to new treatments and discoveries that will allow us to improve the mental health of our youth. The goal of CHAMP is to conduct cutting-edge research in the area of youth mood and anxiety disorders, to develop new treatment protocols, and to train the next generation of clinician scientists to continue to do this work for years to come. We have grown considerably since CHAMP launched two years ago. We've gathered research funding and started new research projects in a number of areas. We've also hired new faculty and research staff to help us conduct this research. I'm so excited to share that we've also recruited our newest faculty member, our clinician scientist, Dr. Adam Miller, who brings incredible expertise in youth suicide prevention. I have never seen a time before where the legislature, the funders, the communities have been open to talking about mental health in this way. And I believe that CHAMP could be a model of how to integrate cutting edge research-backed care across our state. Thanks to the funding from the Foundation of Hope for CHAMP, I'm gonna be able to take my program of research into some exciting new directions. Right now I'm working on a project to try to investigate the links between early adversity and suicide risk among some of our youngest kids. The next step is to actually work on a research project of preteens to understand that very vulnerable transition between pre-adolescence into adolescence. Finally, we're gonna be able to leverage technology to help improve personalized care for teenagers who are receiving mental health care in their primary care settings. And so that's really exciting because it takes all of the technologies and helps figure out how to deliver the tailored intervention for our teenagers in the community. It has been incredibly gratifying to see the growth of CHAMP across the last couple of years. Our next step in growing CHAMP is to bring in our third scholar who is an expert in middle childhood. Thanks to our partnership with the Foundation of Hope, we are closer than ever to conducting research across the full developmental span. I think the Foundation of Hope is a source of inspiration. We desperately need new solutions and new treatments for the issues of mental health because it's a growing epidemic and mental health illness research is the best way to combat these problems. There is no doubt that the continued growth of the CHAMP program will have an incredibly meaningful impact in families like Grayson's. But we can't do it alone. We need your help. 
Join us in supporting the transformational work of this truly vital program. I've been coming here for years before I lost my son because I recognized how much good it was doing. I hope that everyone gives to the Foundation of Hope because I sat in your seats and I pray to God that no one is sitting in mine in the future. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you all the ways that you can help the Angus Barn raise money for this cause. Number one, take one of these brochure stands from the break room, take it to any business that you go to, open up this little part in the back and ask the business if you can put it in their business. If they say no, say, well, would you please put it in your break room? But if everybody here just puts one out, that's 300 of these brochure stands that are out in the community. The next way that you can help us is by putting a yard sign out if you have a great uh, corner or if you live on a street where, where it can be really noticed. And when you put it out, please put the festival part facing the road because we want to emphasize that this is a festival and it is so much fun. Okay, then we have weekends with back-to-back -back events on Saturday and Sunday coming up. This coming Saturday, we have an event which is an auction where everybody brings in things that they don't want or, you know, in good condition that they don't want that they're willing to sell. Susan puts prices on them and then they're in the hallway between the kitchen and the wine cellar and we bid on these items all night long and then they, they get sold. The very next night, which is a Sunday, we do trivia, which starts at 10 o'clock at night and that's going to be very fun, teams of five. Then the next Saturday, which is the 28th, uh, we are doing an auction in the Saturday meeting where managers are auctioning off things like parking spaces, uh, days off, all hands on deck days off. We're doing, uh, we're doing like uh, car manager wash your car. One manager will, will cook a meal for you. I mean, I mean, there's going to be all kinds of, hold, hold up with it. There's, there's going to be, all, don't, don't. Don't worry, uh, Lorenzo. Come on, you stand beside me. <laughs> We're gonna, you're in the video. We're, you're in the video. We're gonna do all kinds of things. Lorenzo might auction off something for you. Who knows? <laughs> okay, but that's gonna be a very fun live auction in our Saturday meeting. Then that next night, which is Sunday the 29th, we're doing bingo, and that starts at 10 o'clock. That's really fun. Also, there's a 50-50 raffle going on if you want to buy tickets for that. However much money we raise, 50% of it goes to you and 50% of it goes to the Foundation of Hope. If we raise $300, 150 of it goes right in your pocket, 150 goes to the Foundation of Hope. And the last way that you can help is through our bake sale. If you want to bring something in and we put it on the chef's table in the kitchen, and sell those items, that's another way that we, we raise money. And so I just wanted to make y'all aware that this cause is so important and it's so important to the Angus Barn. We do support many causes, but this is really our special cause. And I would love to, to know that 100% uh, of the Angus Barn team members participated in some way. And you know what? If you can't do any of these things, Bring your family out for the walk and have a great time. It's $30 for Angus Barn employees to come and, and the regular price is 70. So we would uh, love to see you there. Thank you.